Well, aircraft maintenance training for Shepard Air Force Base dates back to prior to World War II. Um, part of the Army Air Corps, they stood up training here at Shepard Field at the time with the requirement of training about 5,000 maintainers um, for purposes that they saw they would need during just day-to-day -day operation. Of course, this was prior to World War, excuse me, this was prior to, the, to Pearl Harbor. And by the end of World War II, the base had actually trained 42,000 airmen maintainers. Um, and those maintainers were working on fighters and medium range bombers. I believe that we are why the Air Force exists. Um, point blank, maintainers, getting iron ready to get in the, to go in the air, provide cover for our Army brother and our Marine Navy. That's why we, we became a separate service, to put a focus on what air power could deliver to our nation. And um, the, the challenges we have every day, a very dynamic environment is what we have to continue to shape, to mold. Um, seeing young airmen coming in and knowing that the challenges that they're going to face and have to address in their four, 10, 20 years is gonna be very different than the challenges I, I um, addressed as I came up in the military. The people and their drive to deliver greatness is what makes this worthwhile. And going out on the flight line every day, hearing engines going, smelling JP-8, and seeing a plane go up and come back with, with that pilot there is what it's all about. I've got 20 years active duty in aircraft maintenance, and I've also got 20 years of civil service where I've dealt with three different schoolhouses. Watching what we do every single day uh, watching the aircraft take off, come back and land, or sending the airmen out to, uh, to check on a, fuel, a fuels problem that is causing their aircraft not to be fully mission capable. They go out and they do their job in a timely manner and get it done correctly and uh, fulfilling the Air Force mission as aircraft main, maintainers. It's enjoyable to see them do that uh, even to this day when I hear an aircraft flying overhead, I look up to see what kind of aircraft it is. When it comes to aircraft maintenance, I've been a part of Operation Enduring Freedom, Inherent Resolve, and forwarding some of the uh, Air Force's nuclear capabilities. Down here in the A-10, F-15 world, these are legacy aircraft, right? So they've been through the test of times and they've been a part of the Air Force's history for a very long time. And I take pride in teaching these airmen uh, how to fix, problem solve, and become credible aircraft maintainers going up to their next base. Somebody had to teach me, and I think it's uh, a valuable thing for me to come here and instill that uh, work ethic and grit and the, the knowledge that I've had throughout these years and passing on to my apprentice. You know, as a little kid, uh, having the last name Doolittle, I wasn't really excited about it. It was a character builder. Um, you know, little kids would always make fun of the last name. It's silly, Dr. Doolittle, um, and really, you know, there aren't many people that I ran into in my life that were familiar with the, uh, you know, General Doolittle and the Tokyo Raiders. Um, every once in a while, I'd run into somebody who uh, knew about the raid, and, and they typically were in you know, prior service or currently in the, the armed forces. Um, but it was really eye-opening for me when I enlisted, and you know, being part of the Air National Guard in D.C. and you know, especially coming to train here, how everybody knows about uh, the raid and, and Jimmy Doolittle, and, and you know. Uh, it, it really makes me feel special. It makes me feel like, uh, you know, that I'm part of something that's really important. And I mean, I haven't done anything. I'm just a regular guy uh, looking forward to a great Air Force career, but um, it makes me feel proud, proud for my her family heritage and uh, proud to be an American. I'd love to just see the, the, um, the camaraderie continue, the pride in, in the work, you know, really understanding the legacy and the history behind um, you know, what we're doing here and, and the impact that, you know, the maintenance of an air aircraft has on, you know, not just our country, but the entire world. You know, if, a, if an aircraft isn't properly maintained, then the mission can't be completed. And if the mission isn't completed, then we might not be able to preserve our way of life. And I think that, uh, that, that that's a huge deal. And to be able to connect the dots between, you know, what we're doing here with uh, the maintainer tools in a hangar, 
uh, working on an aircraft and the ultimate uh, impact that has on our country and our civilization is, is pretty uh, earth shattering.